Hi there. Unless you've absolutely been living under a rock for the last year or so, you've probably heard of the Zika virus. It's a virus spread by two specific types of mosquitoes, which are rather unique in that um, they bite during the day rather than the evening, um, but they have the ability to carry this virus. I'm going to demonstrate an application to you that was developed by one of Click's partners called Bardes, and it's built on the Cloudera platform. Before I demo the application, I want to walk through a little bit about the data and explain why I think this was a great fit and how I think it may help you understand a couple of concepts regarding big data and in terms of what analytics can do for you that typical reporting can't. When we look at this, this is really a classic big data case, something that Cloudera fits very, very well with. What I mean by that specifically, when you're looking at big data, any book you read, big data for dummies even, is going to tell you there's three V's involved with big data that separates it from other types of data. It's not just the size of the data, but volume is one of those components where you're looking at massive amounts. And one of the beauties of using a, a big data system like Cloudera is you can use just basically readily available hardware. It's not a matter of buying the fastest disks or having a huge SAN set up. It's machines that are in clusters that then share that data. So you're using multiple disks to look and handle the volume of what you've got. The second V is for velocity, and that means how fast is the data coming? This isn't used for slowly changing dimensions where you might have a couple of patient address changes a year type things. This is for data that could be, in fact, streaming data where it's coming pretty much live and it could be coming really fast. Um, the other part of velocity, I believe, is not just the velocity at which the data comes in, but the velocity at which we have to be able to consume it. And so this Zika case is one that I believe really represents the fact I might have access to the data, but if I were to use traditional IT-based development methodologies, by the time I get to it, it's over, right? This could be a full-blown pandemic, not just the, the problem that you're hearing about now. Um, so the beauty of being able to bring that data in and handle it rapidly is also one that has to do with this third V and solves that problem of how can we do this quicker? That's the ability to handle a variety of data. Things don't have to be structured. You don't have to write a big data dictionary um, and create everything. You don't have to create structures and databases and work on ETL. You take the data from the stream, you pump it in to Cloudera, and you move forward in with the ability to start running um, data science types of things and being able to do analytics with that data. So what type of data were we working with for this application? What I'm going to demonstrate is we were working with the mosquito population. So we had, this is readily available data, and one of the things that we did was begin looking at it year by year, and you'll see that this, these mosquitoes, these aren't brand new, nobody just invented these or bought these at Walmart and shipped them out. Um, suddenly, this isn't just a problem that was located to one area as you hear about now. As we float through year by year, one of the things that we'll see is when we got to 2013, things kind of blew up. Why was there a gigantic population of these mosquitoes um, isolated kind of towards Brazil and Colombia? What, what led to that? And that's why you need multiple sources of data. And that's where the Cloudera and the Click come in. They can handle this type of thing so we can bring it in. So one of the questions is why? why? Why suddenly in 2013 did this mosquito population magnify so abundantly? One of the sources that we brought in for this project was weather data. Weather data, while you may not be thinking of it as huge, this is really big. There are over 10,000 weather stations around the world that are constantly streaming weather updates. You've got to get that data in. It's not like you say, give me an Excel sheet from three months ago so I can look at this data. This is ongoing, really rapidly changing, moving data. 
with that data, we were able to analyze and saw that in 2013, there was a very dry monsoon season. So what should normally have been very rainy and had a lot of storms was very dry. And thus these pools of water that would already been existing where mosquitoes could be laying larvae, it's not being touched. Those pools were able to just continue to breed and breed and breed and breed. And you ended up with a gigantic um, population of mosquitoes. We also, for this application, brought in the actual Zika virus cases. Who's infected? Where were they in the world? This is just a pretty image, <laughs> if you call it that, to show you the types of signs that you'd be looking for with Zika. So we brought all that data in to try to see where they're from, and more importantly, where were they going? Those people were infected, so we need to find out what the flight patterns were, with flights in and out of countries like Brazil and Colombia and Mexico, where there's a large number of cases. So we had to bring that data in again. These are disparate data sources. These aren't all in the same format. This isn't just like there's a table that we could bring in um, from a database like SQL Server or Oracle. This is just data that we had to stream in and pull, and that's what Cloudera does. And so we looked at these flights. We're going to walk through a couple of those things. There's one more type of data that you may find a little bit unusual. We, we were looking for hospital supply data. Why? Because we wanted to know if these cases are showing up, where they're showing up, and are the hospitals equipped to be able to deal with those cases. Just like the Ebola pandemic, supplies had to be at the places where these cases were showing up. And so we had to go get this type of data. And we'll walk through what that would look like and how that was done. And so now this is the point of the demo. As a solution architect, I usually have salespeople throw this slide up. In this case, I got to do the whole thing. But I've always wanted to do a slide that just said demo. And then somebody else would move on. So what I'm going to do is move on to the demo itself. And we're going to take a look. This is the world map we kind of showed you. This is all cases for all time. One of the things that you can use click for is as you filter, we can walk through and just narrow it down. So I want to look just at the year 2004. And we can see these cases. If I go to the year 2005, I can see where the mosquitoes were. If I go to the year 2006, I can see where mosquitoes were. And so on and so on. And each year that we walk through this, you're going to see there was just random spots where there was some mosquitoes. Not all that big of a deal, nothing unusual. This is the same kind of thing we'd see with pretty much any tool visualizing that one source of data. It's when we got to 2013 that I mentioned, we see suddenly that we've got an issue. We, we see that there's a large cluster of these things. And again, that was the result of the weather data. And so what we're going to do, um, we're going to take a look at it based on a more of a world view. And I'm going to remove the filter for 2013. So we're looking at the um, 38 top countries that, in terms of cases, we can see those colored. So on the other screen, we were looking at a point map in click. This is the ability to see these things more as a KML base where I just want to see volumes. I don't want to see actual cases because there's thousands that we're dealing with here. Um, so I need to see kind of in a color code. What I can see is that Colombia actually has more confirmed cases than Brazil, yet it's Brazil you hear most about. And the reason for that obviously was Brazil's the host of the Olympics. And so that made much more of a media splash and plant fear in the minds of people. Then looking at Colombia, nobody would probably care. The other thing that we looked at, this was kind of interesting. So we're looking at the number of confirmed cases. And it also shows the number of suspected cases, cases that people are suspected to possibly have. But we haven't confirmed that they actually have Zika yet. And so the third most confirmed cases are in the country of Puerto Rico. And yet you'll note they have zero suspected cases. The same as Mexico, meaning they're not reporting their suspected cases. Until they're confirmed, there's nothing being reported. So you really have no idea 
how bad it could be in those areas and so they're actually confirmed and so that's just one of the interesting things that came about from looking at this data I'm going to take a look here we're going to look at um, uh, travel spread to the United States and so what we're looking at as we zoom in on the United States we're looking at flights into the United States and we can see that Brazil has quite a few we've got 58 flights a day from Brazil to the United States we have 49 from Colombia and as we look at these other countries that are infected like Mexico and Puerto Rico we can see quite a few cases and so these two are particularly disturbing there's a lot of cases um, from Mexico and this is a country that doesn't report their suspected cases and so that could be a bad thing um, but this is a great use for um, one of clicks extension which is a core diagram so you can see to and from relationships um, in a bigger scale something a little bit more visual than just seeing this in like an Excel sheet or a chart or something like that and so I'm going to go ahead and show you one more thing we're going to take a look at Texas Hospital specifically so we're going to drill into Texas and this is one of the neat things we can see here is we can do this KML mapping and it could be at the county level and it could be heat map so we can see a large cluster in Houston a larger cluster in Dallas and we can break these things down this is where I mentioned the hospital supply chain data and this is where we pulled this from so this is why I've narrowed Texas we can take a look at the number of cases in counties and based on those cases and the supplies that are available at these hospitals do they have enough on hand so this hospital would have enough of the primary vaccine or the primary drug to treat 85 percent of the cases that would show up now fortunately there's multiple hospitals in this county this Harris County where we have these 12 cases um, don't worry about these addresses um, these are made up to hide the names of the real hospitals if I were to show you this two, same exact address and yet two completely different counties because we've just kind of randomly generated um, addresses um, from another system to show you the key thing though is when we find a hospital like this that only has the ability to treat 44 percent of the predicted cases for that area that would be a problem and so that's really where this application comes into play one of the other things um, that I really loved using this application for was when I looked at the country as a whole just the whole country of the United States and the cases we could track the number of cases that were there if we look we can see quickly that Florida was number one with 322 um, cases all travel related however this is where it gets interesting there were eight suspected cases that had nothing to do with travel these were cases that were passed on within the state of Florida either sexually or by mosquitoes of those eight suspected cases six have been confirmed here's where I really loved about this this demo was done weeks before the media ever caught on to the fact that Miami had an issue and so this is really that power of being able to tie this data together you simply cannot get that kind of speed in accessing data using traditional data methods where you ask an IT department and you build out specifications and you spend months working on requirements and getting um, a, a database server set up and you make sure that you guess how much disk space you're going to need by then the thing is long gone um, what I what I hope you can see um, and, and I know that you're aware of we live in a really fast-paced world a, a world that's facing challenges as we become a more global society a world that's facing challenges kind of like your company's probably facing challenges what Bardess has demonstrated with this application is that by using the right data platform and the right analytic platform two things that can handle multiple disparate data sources can present that data visually for you so that you can make um, learned guesses you're taking not 
data and you've converted it to information and in knowledge and hopefully actionable intelligence that can solve the problem. If we can do this to try to stay ahead track and stay ahead of a pandemic, imagine what we can do with your data.